So I'll start cocktail class now. Um, but if you don't follow me, you can follow me. Um, I'm a bartender and that's what I do, bartender content here on TikTok. And so today is my first weekly live cocktail making class. Um, so I'm gonna do them every Thursday at five o'clock. And if you don't know and you haven't been watching me, um, I've been bartending close to 10 years now, um, but I've been in the restaurant industry for about 15. Um, starting from when I was 18, I've always had a restaurant job and uh, I like food and I love cocktails and um, I've worked in Vegas on the strip and now I live in San Diego and so I work around, I've worked around bars and restaurants here, um, but now I have my own um, bartending business. So I bartend events, um, I do social media. Um, I also am a brand ambassador for CW Spirits. So if you wanna buy alcohol and have it delivered, uh, shipped to your house, they ship nationwide, you can order them on C, you can order all the alcohol on CW Spirits and using my code MOLLY5 will get you a discount. And I'm actually gonna use one of the vodkas um, that I'm a brand ambassador for today, this Humboldt Vodka, uh, which is cannabis, uh, it's hemp infused. It actually doesn't have any THC or any CBD oil, um, but it is uh, it is uh, hemp infused, so it has a really funky flavor. Today we're making a cucumber gimlet. Um, so a classic gimlet uh, was uh, started like for the history of the gimlet as a classic cocktail, started in the days of essentially pirate ships, 1800s, 1900s, uh, when scurvy was a thing. Um, and so also, Really quick, if you have any questions, you can add them and I'll try and read them as I'm going. Um, but so since scurvy was a thing, um, a gimlet actually became um, a doctor's prescription. Um, so the pirates were only allowed, or I mean sailors or pirates, they were only allowed to drink rum because it was cheap and the captains were allowed to drink gin. Gin was actually a little bit more expensive and gin, they would add lime juice that was technically the original gimlet was gin with lime juice and they thought that cured scurvy. And so the captains of the ships would drink gin and tonics or gin with lime juice and uh, that did cure scurvy, but um, that's where the gimlet came from. And then it's a little up in the air about a gimlet being a piece of the boat that saves everyone or um, it being the name of the doctor but it doesn't matter. Um, and it originally was always made with Rose's lime juice, so technically a classic Gin Gimlet is made with gin and Rose's Lime, but I don't like Rose's Lime and I think it's, it has that weird uh, chemical flavor. So you can absolutely use fresh lime juice and simple syrup and that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, so if we wanna get started, like I said, I'm gonna be using, if, if you're following along, great, follow along, take notes if you want. Um, and then if you want, hey, and then if you want to uh, follow along with me, you'll need to get some of this stuff out. Well, I guess you pointed out it's backwards, but my bad. So if you wanna get some stuff out, you can get a vodka and a gin out. You need just some pieces of cucumber or a cucumber. You need lime. You probably only need one lime. We only need one ounce of lime juice, unless you wanna make more, obviously. You might want two. And then you'll need a simple syrup that really, you can do what I did. I literally just get a little Tupperware, and then you just... <laughs> this is what making videos is like, always a mess. Okay, let's just do that. So you wanna just, uh, I'm gonna do lazy. So uh, I get a little Tupperware, I fill it up half with sugar, half with water, and I stick it in my microwave. Um, and then just put it in for a minute, stir it up, make sure all the sugar's melted. I don't like granny, sugar granules in the bottom of my drink. So if you do, then don't wait for the sugar to be melted or put the sugar in there, but I don't like that. So also as we make cocktails, you know, if you have a shaker tin, that's great, but you don't have to use a shaker tin. I mean, if you have any kind of cup with a lid on it, use it, you know? You can use a mason jar if you have a lid for it. You can use a a, cock, a shaker for the gym, like what, whatever you have that, that just has a lid you can shake with. You really don't need fancy equipment to be able to make nice cocktails. Same with today, we're gonna muddle the cucumber. Now you can use a fancy muddler. There's, there's a wooden ones, but you can use the back of a wooden spoon or any spoon or anything that has a clean, a clean end to just kind of muddle. Or if you really don't want to, you can just shake it up. Just shake it hard. 
Um, also for the simple syrup, as I know some people don't want to make simple syrup, um, what you can do is you can make them in batches. So if you do want to do it, I mean, you can just throw it on the stove, you know, parts one to one parts, and that's all simple syrup is, and you can throw whatever else you want in it. And then I get these little glass jars that have the pop top. They're like five bucks. And then I save them and they'll, they'll be good in your fridge for a few weeks and then just label them. And that's when I'll make, like in my herb garden, I have rosemary, basil, thyme, any of those, or lemon, um, or cinnamon sticks you can throw in there. And then you have all of those ready to make and it's really convenient and it's really nice because it's ready to go. Same with lime juice, I'll, I'll squeeze limes and I'll have them ready to go. So whenever I wanna whip up a quick cocktail, it's, it's much faster, okay? So we'll get started. Everything's sticky now because I spilled that simple syrup. <laughs> that's that's what this is what bartending is. You're you're covered with a random liquid every day that you don't know. Okay. So first we want to take our shaker tin. Now, if you don't have a shaker tin and you are gonna buy one, there's two styles of shaker tins that you'll see online. This one's called a Boston shaker. It has the two parts, the smaller part and the larger part. It'll click on like that and you wanna suction it well. I'm, I'm so messy too. So um, you wanna um, seal it like that. The cobbler shaker, if you've noticed in some of the other videos, it has that little, that little top and it has like a little pour spout that you just put that thing on. I really hate those. They leak a lot and they're messier. And um, I don't know, I just, I don't like them. I think they're, um, I hate to say amateur, but you'll if you order one or you have one at home, you'll you'll get what I mean. You're like, oh yeah, I don't really like this one. So some of them might be cheaper, but if you're buying one, go with a classic Boston shaker for one. Two, when you're making a drink, obviously you always want to make it in the smaller tin because when we're pouring the liquid into the bigger tin, it's gonna fit. Sometimes people make it in the bigger one and then you're pouring it into the small one, it can overflow. We don't do that. So get the smaller tin. We're gonna take our cucumber. I was practicing yesterday, so I've already had a few of these with the cucumber. We'll cut three to four slices, depending on how much you want. Doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be fancy because we're literally gonna muddle these. If you cut them in smaller chunks, it's easier to muddle. So three slices and put it in there. Make sure you don't put ice in first because you want to muddle this first. Okay, now we're going to give it a good muddle. So get it in there. Now, the more we break up these seeds, the more flavor you'll get when we shake it. It'll infuse better. <clears throat> And plus you wanna get all the kind of juice and the water out of the cucumber so that it's for our drink. Now a traditional gimlet doesn't have cucumber, but I think it's a nice addition. And because of the hemp infused vodka that I'm using, I think it goes really well with cucumber and the flavors. I forgot to talk about that. Okay. So if you can see that I got it all smashed up really well. And you might be able to see some liquid coming out from the cucumber. That's exactly what we want, okay? So next we'll take a lime and we want one ounce. If you guys know the trick, a, a traditional gimlet just has gin and lime essentially. That's, I mean, I, yeah, I went over it at the beginning of class with the, uh, so a traditional, traditional gimlet is made with roses lime juice but technically I like it with lime juice and simple syrup because um, Rose's lime juice is, is gross. So if you wanna get the most juice out of your citrus, you wanna roll it on the ground, not the ground. You wanna roll it to get the juice out of there and it'll like loosen it up, okay? So you wanna cut it in half. You'll get more juice if you cut it this way instead of the long way without the rind, so do that. If you want to be really precise, get your uh, jigger out or any kind of measuring tool that you have. We want to do one ounce of lime juice. Now, like I said, a half of a lime is about a half of an ounce. If you want to measure it, I'll measure it for the video. 
But if you want to, you can just squeeze both limes into the shaker tin. It depends on the season too, because uh, you know, some limes be dry AF. Okay. All right. So see that, it's a little full, but we have an ounce of our fresh lime juice. Like I said, I spill it everywhere. Pop it in there. Cocktails don't need to be fancy, they just need to taste good, okay? There's your tip for the day. Uh, okay, so we have our cucumber, we have our one ounce of lime juice. Now we're gonna take our Humboldt vodka. Now, like I said, this is the hemp infused vodka. Uh, so you can get this from CW Spirits, it's linked in my bio. Like I said, I'm a brand ambassador for them. So if you buy anything off CW Spirits, because it's a regular liquor store online, so you can get anything you want, use my code MOLLY5, and then you'll get a 5% discount off the purchase. I think they're still doing free shipping for $125 and more, which is easy to spend. Four or five things, and you're at $125. Bucks. But you can also use a gin for this cocktail or a vodka. Um, the botanicals will go really nice with the cucumber and the lime. But this one, because it's hemp infused and it's a vodka, it drinks more like a gin. Um, so smelling it, it literally kind of tastes like celery and grass. It's kind of cool and grassy. Um, but also, like I said, this doesn't have any THC. This doesn't have any CBD or anything. Um, so it is legal in all states. It comes from Humboldt County, which if you are a weed smoker at all, um, you can, you, you know that, uh, sorry, somebody's inviting me to a live that I don't think I wanna do. Um, Humboldt County is known for redwood trees and pot growing. Uh, so they grow a lot of weed there. They finally made a uh, hemp infused vodka because everybody wanted them to, and I really love it. You can see I'm already like about halfway done with the bottle. Oopsies. Okay, so we need two ounces of Humboldt vodka, gin, whatever vodka you have at home two ounces of that. If you have a jigger, use it. If you have a Pyrex, use it. If you measure with your heart, use that. Okay. And then last but not least, we're going to add our simple syrup. Our jigger again. Oh, so I like to use three quarter ounce of simple syrup. So it'll be right above the lip. My jigger has lines. You can see them right there. So that means this, the smaller one, on most jiggers, this side's gonna be two ounces and this side's gonna be one ounce, okay? Um, so you can see the first line's gonna be a half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce, two ounce. Even on this side, you can see this lip here, that line is gonna be one, uh, one and three quarter ounce. Okay, so we wanna use three quarter ounce of simple. I just made it so you might see some steam. Okay, and that is our gimlet. Okay, so now we want to add ice to it. I have ice. This right here. Put it in there. Okay. So now let's see this is full. Now we can add it to the large tin. And you want to lock it on there. So you want to lock it hard or else it'll leak and it'll get on you. Now, when you're shaking it, if you're new to this, sometimes, not sometimes, some people like to put their hands on both sides of the shaker tin to hold it and shake. You could definitely do that if you feel more comfortable and it won't pop off. Just make sure you put pressure and hold it. I like to hold it with one hand. I kind of squeeze it. Oh, sorry. I kind of squeeze it with one hand and hold it, but you can hold it with two. Now you want to just make sure you don't do the jack off, the jack off uh, shake. But you know, don't, don't do that. Don't ever do that. Also, make sure the small one is on top of the little one. You don't want to shake this way. You want to shake this way. Um, I like to do it in more of a round motion. Sometimes people like to shake like that. I like to do this. <laughs> Nobody wants to jack off shake, okay? Keep it high and keep it cool. Okay, you can do it up here. This is always a good look. You can do it up here. That's always a good look. <laughs> right. 
Always keep a smile on your face when you're shaking because the rumor is the face that you make when you're shaking is the face that you make when you're having sex. So you don't ever want to be the bartender that's going, you know. <laughs> okay. All right, we have a good shake. So the way to get the lid off is you want to hold the pressure here. So where you see your shaker tin, it's sealed right there together, right? Put your thumb on that pressure point and give it pressure and go 45 degrees next to it and hit it off. Yeah, you always gotta look at the upper face. So put the pressure on the thumb on the flat part, hit it off, and it'll pop off every time. So when you see bartenders struggling with the lid and they're just, <laughs> I'm always like, Okay, so let me show you again. When you have it sealed on there, pressure on the flat part, you can put your thumb between it, 45 degree angle, pops off every time. Okay, so you can use a rocks glass with fresh ice um, or I feel like being a fancy bitch today, so I'm gonna do a martini glass. I almost forgot our garnish because we gotta be fancy. We're using a martini glass, we need to, so we'll just cut off another little wheel of this. Cucumber. Also, I got the cheap cucumbers. I didn't get English cucumbers, but my bad. You wanna cut the little slit for your drink, just halfway. Clip it on the side of your drink. Look how cute that is already. Now this is the part, if, if you can't, if you don't have a strainer for the rest of the cucumber and everything, that's fine. I'm gonna double strain it to get all the seeds out because it's a martini. You can just strain it onto fresh ice if you want. And if you like chunks, throw it all in there. Okay, ready? Strain it out. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Can you see that? Yeah, you can't see it that well. You have a nice cocktail every time. Okay. Ready? Okay, uh oh. Okay, it's full. Cheers. It's really good. This is better than the one I made yesterday, so I'm glad about that. <laughs> you can really, you can really taste the Humboldt vodka, the flavor it comes through, and the cucumber. Um, so it's really nice. It's kind of like fresh, a little bit, um, not grassy, it's vegetal. It's fresh and vegetal and light. So cheers to that. Um, if you all have any questions about anything, go ahead and leave them in the chat. Um, I'll just keep chatting while I'm drinking this and uh, we can go over other questions. Like I said, I'll be hosting live cocktail classes every Thursday now at 5 p.m. Uh, I'll announce them on Tuesday what you need to get or the ingredients, but always leave comments if you want to learn how to make a drink, if you want me to do a cocktail class on something that you like. You can always comment on one of my videos as well. Um, also, if you enjoyed this video, um, I mean, you can like this. You can always send me a Venmo. It's backwards and it fell over. I accept Venmo and Cash App too and it's Molly Shakes It Up. That's a uh, little thing, but anyways. So, uh, thank you. Um, so as you're learning to make cocktails and everybody else always asks me, how do you remember all the drinks? Like there's so many recipes, right? Well, as a little disclaimer, there's an easy way. I mean, a lot of classic cocktails, they're all really similar ingredients. It's all pretty much the same thing. Oh, good. Um, all classic cocktails, I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them are the same thing. So how this is a gimlet. Um, this was just, technically it's made originally made with gin, but you can make it with vodka. It's lime and simple syrup. So if you have vodka, lime, and simple syrup, change the alcohol, what is that? If you add rum, lime, and simple syrup, you have a daiquiri. If you add tequila, lime, and simple syrup, you have margarita, right? If you go back to vodka with lime and simple syrup, but instead of the simple, you add triple sec, you have a kamikaze. If you add lemon, simple syrup, triple sec, you have a lemon drop martini or a lemon drop, same thing. Um, and then if we go to lemon, I mean, it's all the same, but with lime, with the lime and the simple, 
well, lime and sugar, you add cachaca, you have a caipirinha. So a lot of these drinks are, are similar. If you have vodka, lime, and you add club soda, you have a Ricky. Or if you have gin, I mean gin, lime, and club soda, you have a Ricky. Whiskey, lime, club soda, you have a Ricky. So a lot of these cocktails are the same and people act like, oh, I know how to make these. They're the same drink. It's just a different alcohol. A popular one with that too is with lemon. So if you use gin, lemon, and honey, it's called a bee's knees. With whiskey, lemon, and honey, it's called a gold rush. Um, you know, things like that. So there's, there's a lot of really similar classic cocktails. They just call them something different and there's like one off ingredient. So pretty much with any drink, you change one small ingredient and it's a different drink. Like with the vodka and the lemon in the sugar, you add some club soda and that's a Collins. Or with gin, lemon, and, and sugar, club soda, you got a Collins. So, anyway. Does anybody have any questions? Did anybody make this live with me? No, anybody, Bueller? Should I write the ingredients on the board? What can you use instead of muddler? I mean, honestly, you can use whatever you want. Um, you can use the back of a wooden spoon if it's clean. Um, you got a potato masher, you can use that. <laughs> um, you could, what you could do too, you could cut them up into little cubes with your knife and then just shake it really hard. That works too. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, Share a video showing, yeah, exactly, a rolling pin. Um, whatever you have to just model something. It doesn't even need to be that crazy. Like when you're making a mojito with lime and mint, you, you don't wanna muddle the shit out of your mint or else you're gonna get those tiny little mint pieces in your drink and that's disgusting. You really don't even need to muddle mint that much to get the mint flavor out of it. So one of my science fun facts is when you're driving past and you smell cut grass, that's actually grass's distress signal. So every animal has a distress signal when they're hurt. So when you cut a plant and you get that aroma, that's actually signaling help, which is fun. So that's what you're doing when you're muddling something and you can get that fresh aroma. When you peel something fresh, yeah, slap the shit out of it. And that's where you get all the citrus and that's their distress signal because you're hurting it. Anyway, but yes. But yeah, you guys should try the Humboldt Vodka. Um, it's really good. Tastes like, uh, tastes like grass. If you're a granola E and you're a vegan, this one's cool. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you're a drinker. Um, yeah, I really like it. I thought it would be fun. Next week, I was thinking about making a spicy like cilantro margarita. That sounds cool. Oh, you see the little crown? hey -o. I'm a princess, that's why. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you can slap the shit out of it. Thank you. Roses, oh. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about any liqueur? Anybody have any questions about fun facts? Where things come from? I got them. Or you can just hang out while I drink. Okay. Yeah, so when I when I worked in Vegas, I opened this Mexican restaurant called Tacos and Tequila in the Luxor. I think it's closed now. But we had this one margarita that we would muddle cilantro. And I can't remember if it was... I think we muddled jalapenos and cilantro and made a margarita out of it. And it was so good. Um, I can teach people to bartend. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually working on um, making some video classes live. Um, also, if you're in San Diego, I, I bartend events sometimes at an event space in Vasa. So I'll be setting up some in-person classes at Vasa. Um, 
I know there's more. I was going to finish talking about that. I'm getting distracted. Um, <clears throat> so I'll be teaching some live cocktail classes soon. We're just kind of waiting for COVID to blow over and then I'm going to get a schedule together um, because of that. And then we'll do a couple cocktails there. Um, but the gimlet is originally from the 18, 1900s with sailors on ships. So because the sailors were getting scurvy, um, it was actually doctor ordered and um, the prescription was drank every day. So there's your gimlet fun fact. You can have one every day because doctor's orders. Um, so because scurvy was occur happening, they finally found out that citrus is what cures scurvy. So it became a thing with, and it was actually a thing that Rose's lime juice came out in like 1897 or whenever. Um, so then the boats were prescribing Rose's lime juice every day. And because it doesn't taste very good, they were cutting it with gin. And the captains would drink it with gin because gin was more expensive. And I think gin originated in um, Scandinavia, but then it was brought into London, England, and made really popular there because people could make it in their damn bathtubs with juniper berries. Um, but then when they were, the gin was too expensive for the sailors and rum was cheaper for the sailors. So they used to call it a grog, G-R-O-G. -G. It was called a grog and it would be rum with lime juice and the sailors would drink that to cure their scurvy. It would be the roses lime juice with the rum. But what they're saying is that also is the, um, the inspiration for the daiquiri because obviously a daiquiri is rum, lime juice, and simple syrup. So there you go. So a gimlet is a, a really classic old school drink. That's why it's originally made with gin. Um, you can make it with vodka, like I said, but I use this because it, it drinks like a gin, um, this hemp infused vodka. I recommend it. If, if, if you have a decent alcohol um, liquor cabinet at home, and you have basic vodkas and you're ready to try something new, this is a really fun one to try. A really fun one to try. Um, but yeah, so back to my my friend from San Diego, Diego Padres fan, and I forget your first name right now. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm working on shooting um, like online cocktail classes. I've gotten like a setup and I'm building the program. The only problem, I'm just moving right now. Um, you can see my whole liquor cabinet's practically empty. Um, I moved some stuff over yesterday and today and uh, like my bar cart's almost empty. I've been packing everything up and moving. So I'm moving up the street, not leaving San Diego or anything. Um, a little bit of a smaller space, but I'll make it work with my videos, make a little setup. And uh, so hopefully next Thursday at five o'clock Pacific time, um, I'll be shooting this from the new spot and we'll see how that goes, but anyways. Any other brain bustas? Are you trying to get a bartending job? Anybody? We'll just hang out. Yeah. Does anybody have any favorite tools that they like? Everything's so sticky from when I spilled the simple syrup earlier. <laughs> anybody? Bueller? All right. When I'm done with the drink, I'll end the live. Unless somebody has any other questions, we'll just hang out and um, yeah. Like I said, every Thursday from now on at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I start, I'll start cocktail class and uh, we can go from there. What's everyone's favorite music?
Oh, I have a good joke. What kind of couch has no kids? A pull-out couch. It's <laughs> a good one. Oh. All right. Okay. Well, I'm about to take my last sip, so I will end the live. It's been about a half an hour. That should be a good time for a cocktail class. We'll just do one drink a week. Um, so every Thursday, 5 p.m., I'll be here. And I will see you then, or I will see you at another time. <laughs> Take another sip, though. Very good. All right. How do we, how do we turn this thing off? Bye. Over it. Oh, loved it. I was like, over it. Me too. <laughs> Just kidding. Glad you loved it.